Good morning, and welcome to another ironic introduction to another video. Today, I'm going to be hammering out a path guide slash like a rundown of all the paths for the easy and normal modes. Um, if I don't get to the normal mode today, I apologize. Uh, it's been a very, very long day of work. I had to work some forced overtime. Um, some issues in the lab, you don't want to hear about that. Uh, so I'm going to at least hammer out the easy paths, and depending on how fast that goes, which I believe it will be very quickly, I'm going to hammer out the normal paths right afterwards. Um, but for the most part, yeah, just looking at these these easy nodes, this should be really quickly. It'll be mostly just a discussion of the boss nodes. So uh, here we go. Path 1 on easy uh, starts over here at the top. Uh, and it'll be node one and so all of the nodes except for the bosses are just iso infused and health boost so you will have uh three nodes of iso infused health boost up to um node 15 uh, and this node here will be 40 percent enhanced poison uh, as well as some link nodes so you'll want to have two people set up paired up uh, and they'll clear together and then it'll make this node a little bit easier to clear uh, and then I believe with the junction, you'll be able to split off back into the three paths from here. But if not, the continuance of node uh, path one brings you up to here. And it will take you up through here all the way up to node uh, 42, which, which is your next boss fight. And this one will be bloodletting. Uh, and then it will, you'll move into a like mini boss node for pessimist. Uh, and then again, I believe this will bring you back into a junction. So I'm going to go over... Uh, the mini bosses and the final boss all at the end and so for path two you'll be up here again with uh, path one it'll be iso infused health infused all the way up and then again you will have that 50 percent enhanced poison uh, so really you can just take this down easily just by bringing someone who's poison immune and or just running like um, someone like running willpower although I imagine at the easy level as a beginner you probably won't be able to afford uh, the unit cost of willpower so just bringing a poison immune champion which is something I'll be posting a video about relatively soon when I have more time uh, and then you'll move into the 42% for bloodletting here uh, you know obviously just running a robot down this path uh, like vision or Ultron um, is like ideal sentinel uh, that'll make this path generally much easier and then you'll move into 45 here for pessimist uh, and so overall that's paths one and two path three uh, it starts here at this node in the middle and you'll it'll take you up all the way into the boss node 20 which will be power gain a hundred percent so if you're sticking defenders there you can expect people to drop like Mordo or Hyperion um, other champions who have power gain mechanics built into them and it will move into the mini boss node 22 uh, which is just fury so you know you can expect heavy hitters there maybe people with a lot of health as they will benefit from increased damage uh, and then again assuming that you can move into any junction let's continue path 3 just like on standard uh, and you'll move through iso and health infused and then you will move into your mini boss node here collectively at 37 and this will be plagued mind uh, and then you'll move into the mini boss node 40 which will be opportunist one and so path four will be the pairing of that you can just go the other direction and it will be the same uh, path five uh, sorry if I if you feel like I shortchanged path four there but I'm actually gonna do that for both of them so path five and six uh, path 5 going up here, nodes 7, 11, 17, and path 6 being nodes 2, 6, and 12. Uh, you'll meet together at the mini boss uh, 8 for node 18, which will be heavy handed. Uh, and then you'll path off into this third section here, and you'll match up into node 43, which is going to be a limber flat 10. So that just means a uh, it will cap off at 10, or I believe it might just be 10, period. Um, which is really nice because it'll get you accustomed to like shorter stun times, but uh, you won't have to deal with like instantaneous no stuns and worrying about only evading. And then you will move into Optimist from there. So uh, future mini bosses. Uh, so like once you once all of you have cleared paths one through six, and you should know that once you get out of the easy, the easy and normal, uh, you do have nine paths from there. And so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to assume uh, you're pathing all the way up and then I'll do an, uh, one where you're pathing up and then into the middle and then I'll do one where you're pathing right into the middle and then one where you're pathing all the way right. Uh, so if you're pathing all the way up, you're going to run at the node 47, which will be strike back. Uh, and then you'll move into node uh, 49, which will be 
armor 20%. And from there, you move into node 52, which will be enhanced special 2. Uh, unfortunately, there's no like uh, pre pre preference there. So perhaps champions with higher higher power gain there as defenders as well would be more sufficient and or champions you know that will naturally prioritize their second special. Uh, but if you are pathing up and then into the middle, it'll be node 47, strike back. Uh, and then from there, you'll walk into a poison and bleed immune. So that's a really good place to stick um, like your really tanky defenders as people who are bringing poison or blood won't be able to take that path at all um, and then you'll move into the boss node the final boss if you're pathing right and then into the middle it'll be node 48 which will be power start one uh, and then you'll move into the poison and bleed node and if you're pathing to the right it'll be power start one uh, followed by kinetic reactor and then you'll move up into node 54 which will be enhanced special one and then finally, the boss is stun immune. That's kind of a standard and definitely what is reasonable for new players because you have to learn the evade mechanic in order to uh, really take that boss down. So as far as like dividing uh, this up, I would highly recommend that you have the people who are taking down the middle node. Uh, what they each should take down these first ones, right? And then they can collectively take down the middle node. Uh, and in that sense, uh, let's say you have one person each for these two paths they will each take on one kind of mini boss as well as collectively take down another uh, like linked node for the final boss. And then the reason I would split it up like that is because your next person will can move up or right accordingly and they will each only have to deal with one mini boss and one linked node as well. And in this way, you've really split the fights up evenly um, and you can adjust depending on where you are at an alliance. I would definitely move through this one at a time um, because in that manner you could choose your path accordingly and that's i'm under the assumption that this image here is the junction so uh, hopefully that's what it is so that being said uh, that was pretty easy that was pretty painless um, that's easy hopefully you move your way out of easy as soon as possible just because uh, right now with the way rewards are set up it's more it's way more valuable to move up as quickly as possible as you can in alliance war difficulties so Moving on to normal mode, um, path one. This is where I'll actually talk about each path. So you will go, um, sorry, you will go into node one, uh, up into the left, and this will be life transfer. Uh, assume when with all of these nodes that they are iso infused, health infused. That's kind of just a alliance war standard. But you will go life transfer into flare, back into life transfer. Uh, and then you will have a mini boss, which I will talk about um, uh, now, I suppose. Um, no, I'm going to... Sorry, I had a hesitation. No, I am going to talk about the mini bosses at the end. So it will be life transfer, flare, life transfer. Uh, and then you will move up into uh, recovery, heal block, recovery. And so what I would do here is bring champions like Hulk Ragnarok, uh, champions with champions with high burst slash champions with heal block so that you can cover the second half. Um, I think that'll be easier. Or depending on how the junctions work, perhaps you'll have someone move up through this first path and then switch to a different path along the way. I definitely think we're going to have a lot of interesting like optimized paths and fluidity between the alliances now. Uh, and then from there, you'll move into uh, boss notes from there. Uh, for path two, you will have uh, enhanced bleed, enhanced poison, enhanced bleed. Excuse me. Uh, and so this is definitely, again, you know, there's always like a bleed and poison path. And so that's what path two will be. Uh, and that will extend into backup recovery here. Uh, and then the best defense and then backup recovery. For the normal mode, the way they've set it up is you pretty much have one node, a different node, and then you flip back to node number one for a linked node. Um, just kind of keep it simple as well as kind of give you give you repetition and comfort with the nodes. For path three, you will start here, uh, and you will have plagued mine, strike back, plagued mine, uh, and then you will move here into power start one, power start two power start one uh, so I'm definitely of the opinion that 
minus the difficulty of bleed and poison if you don't have bleed and poison immunities uh, i think this is going to be one of the tougher fights to do for newer players as you're going to have to bait specials or suffer a special three potentially um, so just keep that in mind maybe go watch a lesson from like dork lessons on how to bait specials it'll be really valuable if you're being assigned path three or taking path three for some reason and or taking people with like really early accessible um power bar denial like hawkeye or vision um it's not amazing but you'll at least be able to handle it a little bit easier uh for path four you will have armor 20 percent energy resistance 20 percent armor 20 uh armor 20 percent so uh definitely expect like beefier guys here P maybe people with like armor ups or any kind of defensive buffs um and you'll move into physical resist critical resist physical resist um in my opinion, uh, as long as you have good game mechanics, I think this is the easiest path uh, because there's no defenders they can really put here that would make it more of a pain. Perhaps like the thing or something, uh, champions with like high defense slash uh, you have to play against mechanically weird like things and voids. Uh, it definitely is what I would expect there personally, but hey, I'm a noob at Alliance War, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. Uh, but that's that's what I would do, just kind of like from my mindset. Moving into path five, you're gonna have soft guard, Aegis, and then soft guard, uh, and then you'll move up into enhanced special one, enhanced special two, enhanced special one. Uh, really to just give you an idea of these, you'll get comfortable with them. Um, nothing too difficult, but definitely just something to be mindful of. And path six, uh, you will have fisticuffs, power reserve, fisticuffs, uh, and then you'll have resistor, outlast resistor uh and because of because of the outlast i feel like this is going to be one of the tougher paths for newer players i just think it's a node that um takes just a little bit of practice to get used to and if you've never seen it before it can really mess you up uh, but for the most part all of these paths are fairly reasonable which is what we would expect from a newer um, an easy and normal difficulty because the difficulty itself is just having the mechanics to play in general um, and it's the mini bosses where you'll really drop problems uh, so if you were on path one and two the mini bosses you'll have to be concerned about are going to be node 15 your first boss which is going to be life transfer and 40 percent enhanced bleed i would highly expect champions that inflict bleed to be here uh, because there's really no other champion you should be putting there um, and perhaps champions with like a really high chance to inflict bleed like uh, if for some reason your alliance has multiple dominoes this is a solid place to put domino i believe um i'm really drawing a blank right now i apologize but there are definitely other better champions nick fury um blade th those are solid champions i think to put here there's more i'm just drawing a blank i apologize uh, and then you're going to have Shank and Heal Block here, uh, which shouldn't be too bad, but just something to be mindful of. Uh, and then you'll move into Pessimist Power Start 1. I think that node's going to be a pain in the arse, so make sure you guys group up for that. Um, just because new players, etc., I think that's the reason I believe that would be such a pain. Um, but we'll see how that one goes. And then if you're taking Path 3 and Path 4, uh, you are going to find yourselves... Um, here at node 20 sorry i have to get close to see it it's not as big on my screen um here at node 20 you'll have power gain 100 percent armor 20 percent i would expect mordo hyperion um, other champions that have power gain to be there maybe even a vision if they have him awakened for the synthesized um, and then you'll move up into node 22 here which will be enhanced fury and opportunist um i think that you know, even like an Awakened Hela could be a pain there, just if you're like thinking of who you should place as defenders. But there's a lot of options with Enhanced Fury and Opportunist, uh, just because I don't think that either of those um, are like very difficultly scaled nodes. Um, and then Path 3 and 4 will then continue into Node 37 mini boss, which will be Kinetic Reactor and Physical Resist, and then Opportunist and Enhanced Special 2. Uh, nothing unreasonable there. And path 5 and path 6 will collectively have to take down a heavy-handed armor 20%. Uh, and then they will move up into a limber, uh, which is probably one of the worst nodes for newer players. Just because if you can't take this person down, like, this is a great place to stick really your tankiest of champions. People with, like, your highest health pools, highest armor ratings. Just because you really want to make it so uh, 
newer players can't parry and rely on parrying uh, as when you're newer at the game you are parrying a lot more than you are evading and so this node could be a really good opportunity to punish um, on easy and normal mode I apologize if you run into something like that in the future and I've caused you that problem like I believe Korg would probably be or like a really solid placement here he's standard good for limber just because when you evade Korg uh, he does get boosted um, charges on whatever the thing is called for his his stacking and then he can go unblockable unstoppable and then you're really in a bind um, and then 46 here is gonna be optimist outlast and again like path six I felt is only is already gonna be frustrating for newer players because of outlast uh, and I definitely think having that there is gonna suck um, this is a really good place, I think, to put high regeneration champions. Like, if you have a Mephisto, I think this is a nice mini boss there for Mephisto. Um, and then the uh, bosses moving into the final boss here for nor uh, normal. Uh, again, I'm going to take my same strategy. So, if you are going up, you are going to have um, Strike Back and Enhance Special One. And then all the way up again, you will move into Breakthrough Heavy Handed. And then your linked node will be enhanced special to power focus. So if you are moving up, uh, resetting, and if you are moving up, you will have strike back and enhanced special one. Moving right into the middle, you will have immunity all. Um, and then moving into the boss, you will have, uh, whoop, I'll talk about that one at the end, sorry. And if you are resetting, moving right, you will have uh, 48, which will be power start to enhance special two. And then you'll move into the immunity all node. Uh, and then moving all the way right, you will have starting with the shared power start two, enhanced special two. You'll move into kinetic transfer, kinetic transfer, sorry, just kinetic transfer. And then moving up into enhanced, uh, enhanced special one and power focus. And then as a alliance completely, you will only have to deal with stun immunity and physical resistance 20. Um, as well as just like a bigger ISO infused and health boost. Nothing too unreasonable, um, especially if you tackle it as a team. I think in the future I will address this like on like a minorly suggested path, but again, still a normal. I would recommend the same thing where you have um, someone move up the middle, someone move right middle, and then they do that first. Uh, and then the next two people can go up, up, and right, right, respectively, and then you will be able to share the fights. Um, slash like juggle your health pools right because maybe you're like moving up here and you've got two champions at full health and you're pretty confident you can move up right and just handle the extra fights then go ahead and do that um, there's a lot of flexibility here in tackling the end stage if I'm right in assuming that everybody will teleport here if you're teleporting into specific spots it's gonna be completely different but we'll know how that junction handles in the future so that's my general path guide uh, I think for easy and normal these are all pretty reasonable um, as long as you don't make any massive mistakes slash you read your nodes, I think that you don't have to worry about like setting up a perfect team. Um, for newer players, if you have a Heimdall, I would personally recommend sticking him in your Alliance War or your Alliance Quest. I feel that that extra 1% health um, can make a huge difference. Um, make sure uh, that you max out your parry, make sure that you unlock Dexterity. I think that these are really, really good tips for Alliance War. Um, and if you're like actively trying to win Alliance War as a newer player, I would highly recommend you max out your Limber Mastery um, pretty early on because uh, in particular in Alliance War, uh, they do have that shortened stun. And so a lot of players might get really comfortable like parrying and then going for a heavy attack because uh, a lot of champions benefit from that, like the Wasp. Um, and so you can really screw people up by having that Limber node. Uh, maxed out because the like higher tier way of co compensating for the limber node is to have uh, I want to say it's called stupefy it's either stupefy or petrify but there's a mastery that increases their stun duration by half a second and it, that kind of like uh, gives you that extra window to get a heavy attack in proper um, so long as the champion doesn't have a reduced stun duration as is um, the window is still small right so like uh, you only get an extra half second on your window but it's all total collectively reduced um, by I want to say like 48 percent um, so all it does is it allows you to still get a heavy attack in if someone's maxed limber but if someone is maxed limber and the attacker doesn't have 
that mastery for the increased stun duration, they can parry all they want. They'll never get a heavy attack in, and you could really screw someone over just by having that up. Uh, sorry if I make Alliance Ward more difficult. Um, some other just like beneficial things is if you can afford it, go ahead. I would recommend getting uh, Willpower. It'll really help earlier on. I think it helps in general just to have one point. You should definitely have those mastery points spent in defense already with like block proficiency being maxed. I personally believe... I personally believe in maxing energy resistance or at least doing like three energy resistance, two physical resistance on your way there uh, just because I make the argument that you can evade a lot of physicals but you can't, uh, you find yourself blocking energies a lot more often just because like some of them like Dark Hawk um, are really long and they're just so much harder to dex properly without getting clipped that you're just better off blocking through it. Um, so I feel like you end up blocking more energy damage than you do um uh, physical damage. Other examples are like Iron Man Infinity War, who I believe does energy damage with like his repulsors. Um, and a lot of times you don't get the perfect parry on that just because it's kind of funky the way you have to do it. It's like you have to do it like 0.1 or 0.2 seconds slower um, and like really close ranged. Um, other, and so you're not getting that parry reduction too. Uh, so I really feel like as far as like stacking those, um, that's much better. When I get to like my completed mastery page, I'll show that up too just for other people. But that's it for this whole video. Um, I will tackle the other four difficulties one at a time the best I can. Uh, this does take quite a while and I have a lot of arena grinding to do. So I do apologize if they come out um, fairly slow. But do keep in mind this is seasoned. Uh, this is the next season, season 10, and so this isn't in effect yet. It will only be coming up with the update, um, so if you're like watching this video, be careful. This content isn't out yet. Uh, that's my one disclaimer, um, and my secondary disclaimer is that even if, even if another YouTuber comes out with path guides for intermediate and hard, uh, I am going to make that video anyways. I've already committed, um, and I will probably already have it recorded and then just not post it for a little while as it's a really good, like, delayed video for me. Um, and it's, like, as a content creator who's trying to make a video every day, uh, it's really nice to have, like, at least a couple videos in backup that for at least, a, like, a week or two for, like, days like today where I worked 13 hours, um, you know, this would really help me out if I had this video prepped in advance. Uh, but that said, I know that that's, like, a little bit more about, like, the background stuff, but... I'm open and honest about it. Uh, I'll hammer out the rest of the map videos as soon as I can, I promise. Um, and I will talk to you later.